Hey guys, Jeremy here with Simple Little Life and welcome to another edition of Tool Time Tuesday. This week, we're gonna take a look at a tool that you have never seen me use on this channel before. That's because I just bought it. Uh, I finally picked up a portable bandsaw and I did a slight modification to it so I can use it as a vertical bandsaw in this fashion. This is one of those tools that I wish I'd purchased years ago because it works so, so good. Let's take a look at it. All right, so this is my Milwaukee portable bandsaw. Uh, this one is a catalog number 6238-20. It's a two speed, um, seven amp or 11 amp, and it's a four and a half inches uh, cutting depth. So that's how long of a cut you can make before you start your material would run into the body here. Um, Really, really simple to use. There's nothing to adjust on it. Um, your belt tension, or sorry, your blade tension is right here and that's just a lever on off. You don't really adjust it, you don't need to do anything. There's no tracking required. Uh, it's got bearing followers, ball bearing followers, just like any other bandsaw would. Um, this one actually has two, I don't know if you can see it there. We've got two uh, individual ball bearings on each side, plus they've got the one that supports the back of the blade. Uh, really, really a solid tool. Quite noisy, I've actually found it to be, like I'm surprised how loud it is when I use it. Certainly have to wear hearing protection when you're using this machine, but works really good. Also this one, uh, this particular model has an adjustable uh, material support here. I don't know if that's necessarily just to uh, make it fit in the box that it comes in and then when you're cutting you can move it out or I suppose there may be reasons why you would leave it adjusted in different ways but uh, the way I use it I just have it set up like this and then I made a little plate that I clamp onto here. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Also uh, like I said this one's just a two speed, a high and a low. Uh, depending on the material, the harder the material, the slower you'd like to run it. I run mine cutting 01 tool steel at in the high and right now I've tried out a 18 and a 14 TPI tooth per inch blades and I actually prefer the 14 which kind of surprises me. It cuts a lot quicker and um, in something like this 3 16 tool steel it cuts much better uh, than the 18 and it's actually doing fairly well. Um, so I've got five mini cleavers cut out on this as well as this blade and uh, that was on this one 14, 14 TPI blade and it shows absolutely no signs of wear whatsoever. It cut the, the last knife just as fast as I cut the first one. So I think that's a fairly good indication it's gonna work quite well. Also, I use this blade to cut this slot in my plate, the table that I made and I'll show you that in one second. A lot of people will actually make some type of a stand to hold this thing upright. I may do that eventually. Let me move the camera back. So I might make a stand to hold this upright eventually, but for now I'm just actually clamping it in my vise. And also, when you're running these machines in this, this configuration, you usually have to do something about the trigger. Uh, most of them don't have a trigger lock for safety reasons, obviously. Um, so you have to, I just have a zip tie on here for now, probably get a piece of Velcro um, just to keep that trigger locked. One thing I also need to do is actually mount a outlet uh, for this with a switch. And I'm actually gonna mount it right into my, my workbench here. Uh, right below the vise, kind of out of the way, but that way I can plug it in and I still have an on and off switch because not the safest idea to be just plugging this into an outlet, letting it run, and then unplugging it when you need it shut off. Now, if something were to happen, you can't quickly uh, kill the power like you would with a switch and it's not the safest setup, but currently I'm doing that. This week I'm gonna get a switch installed so I can run it a little bit more safe. Having said that, anytime you make a modification to an existing machine, Think about it, think about what you're doing. It might not be designed for that and it might be harmful for the machine, it might be harmful for yourself as well. So just keep that stuff in mind. Not a lot of guarding on this one. I haven't removed any guards. You can see the blade the whole way around. Having said that, there's no real place where you can um, get caught in it, or unless you're stupid and you like decide to jam your finger somewhere. You know, if you really want to, you can always hurt yourself on something. So just uh, try and be safe, try not to be ridiculous about it. But all in all, it's a fairly safe machine to use. Obviously one danger uh, is when you're feeding material in, pushing on it, if you end up you know, finishing through a cut, you could always cut your fingers. But then again, you know, it's a lot of common sense. Use a push stick if you have to. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I put it up onto the uh, bench vise. And then I'll show you that little plate that I'd made for it. All right, so this is a bench vise that I put it in. There's nothing special about it. It's just a regular old bench vise. The one thing I would notice though, is that I used soft jaws. 
They sell these at a lot of hardware stores, even the big box stores. These ones have magnets uh, embedded in them. Uh, that way they stick to the face of your jaws. And I like these ones. These are kind of like, a, I'd say it's like a polypropylene or a poly, I don't know, some type of a, a softer durometer plastic. It's not hard, but it's not like a squishy rubber either. Uh, still has enough grip, enough traction, and has a little bit of flex. When you tighten something up, it actually will kind of contour around the object, which just helps hold it there without having to put a lot of pressure on it. So I would recommend something like this. You're going to be clamping like power tools and stuff into your vise. It just kind of saves the tool a little bit. All right, so I've got my bands off. I've got the trigger zip tied in the on position. It's unplugged, obviously. And all I do is I simply kind of put it roughly how I want it to be. Uh, for vertical position like that and clamp it in. That's it, that's all for how I uh, hold my bandsaw. Now there are stands you can buy for these. There's a company called Swagger or Swagen, I forget. I'll put a link in the description below. And they make a table for these, which is actually a really cool idea. I believe that somehow it bolts onto somewhere in here. I don't know exactly, I haven't had a really close look at them. I believe they're around $130 and they kind of create like a little work table now for this. They have different uh, models for different models of saws. Uh, I probably check their website to find out exactly what they have. That might be something I end up buying in the future, but for right now, this is working okay. I believe the price point on those is around $130. And from everything I gather, it's a small, kind of like a mom and pop shop. Like a guy had an idea and he started fabricating it and said, you know, it's a, like a small business. And I think those are the guys that are really, really cool to support, especially with little niche things like this. like. You know, just taking this tool in a way it wasn't designed and using it like this, it's still safe and you're not really altering the tool at all, but you found an incredibly useful uh, purpose for this tool. To buy an upright metal bandsaw like this, you're looking at at least a thousand dollars new and they're huge. They take up so much room. A lot of guys will actually make a little support system, a little bracket system and just mount it to their wall because this is not a very large machine and the blades last quite a long time and it works so well. All right, so let's just quickly talk about the price point of these machines. Um, you can get your lower end ones, your Harbor Freights, for around $130, $150, uh, depending if they're on sale or not. All the way up to ones like this, which are kind of the higher end version of the tool. Uh, this one's like $400. Uh, Milwaukee makes a smaller one. It's got a shallower capacity and it's not quite a heavy motor. That one's like $300. Then you've got like your Grizzlies, which are like $185, bucks, 200 bucks, somewhere in that neighborhood. So there's quite a broad spectrum of prices uh, for these portable bandsaws. But just like anything in life, you always get what you pay for or most of the time. The reason I went with this big heavy one is because, first of all, it's got the larger capacity than the smaller Milwaukee. I'm a Milwaukee fan as well. Um, but also this one has a direct gear drive from the motor to the drive wheel of the bandsaw. Most of them will utilize either a chain drive or some of the cheaper ones, a belt drive. Those are going to eventually give you problems and wear out. Gears do also, but gears will last a lot longer. So it's a little bit on the price point. I'll show you the other quick modification that I did to this saw. Using it in this configuration, it works okay. The one thing that I found is a little bit of an issue is that small little tiny pieces of metal, when you're cutting out knives and stuff, you get little pieces like this. And those kind of get caught between the blade and the roller and that's bad news, obviously, it's trouble. So I'm gonna show you, I'm bring Cameron a little closer and I'll show you this little plate that I made. This was actually just an old, I bought a whole pack of like rifle targets from a guy. Uh, they're not like AR-500 plate or anything, they're just regular mild steel plate. Um, but I had the thicknesses from this one, a quarter inch up to one inch plate, and I bet I had 20 or 30 of them. I got them for like 15 bucks. So I just thought that's a lot of good plate steel. I used a lot of mass targets for like long range shooting, but uh, I thought this was a perfect application uh, for this. I needed a piece of steel, and I like that it was rounded, so I'm not gonna, you know, catch myself on it if I'm walking by it while this is set up. And I'll show you real quickly how I made this thing go on and off, uh, like quick release type fashion. All I did was I just cut one hole straight down the middle. First I'd measured out roughly from the back here to the front of my blade, so I knew how far to bring it down. And then uh, once I'd cut that, marked that line and cut it with this, then I went in there with a zip disc and uh, just kind of widened it out a bit just so I had enough clearance to slide it on and off. Uh, once that was done, I just took in my milling machine and milled a slightly bigger, uh, this is a 3 16 uh, slot in there. You could just drill a bunch of holes and then get in there with the saw and a file and kind of machine it out. I just wanted a slightly larger area there around the blade to make sure that um, 
we weren't ever going to touch. The one thing that I don't compensate for with this setup is this tool rest wiggle. Uh, this is just inherent with the design of their tool rest. It doesn't matter where it's set up. There's a little slop in there, a little jiggle. Um, from the design standpoint, the way they mean this to be used, it's totally fine. Also, I'm simply clamping this plate to this, and even with that wiggle in there, as long as I address it with the size of this slot, it's not an issue when you're cutting. It's not like when you're, uh, I really don't notice that wiggle at all when I'm using it. Having said that, I think maybe the advantage of one of those tables, uh, those plates, is that it wouldn't have any of that wiggle in it, I don't believe. So all we're gonna do is slide this on like this, open up my quick release, and get that put on the bottom there. I'll show you a better view from the bottom how it clamps. And then I just clamp that down. Now this quick release is just from a old uh, bicycle stroller uh, chariot kind of cart thing. Um, at one point in time I had 21 bicycles that were all my own personal bicycles that were all road ready. Like I was a bike fanatic. So my collection of bicycle parts is massive as well as like every type of bike mechanic tool, specialty tool you can name, I've got it. So a lot of times like this, I'll just go to my bicycle parts bin and grab some weird stuff. These quick release clamps are really handy for uh, different jigs and fixtures and stuff you're building in the shop. So kind of just line it up there and clamp her down. And then I'll just check with that wiggle to make sure our blade's not going to touch and we're good there. This thing's ready to use and works really, really well. I'll show you real quickly the bottom side, how I have it clamped onto there. So here's the bottom of the saw here and my quick release. Loosen that. Now, uh, to build this, I had the, the threaded piece, the little bolt or screw that was on the quick release and that ended up originally coming up to here. So I just cut that off flush with the top of the surface and then I've actually had to stack a bunch of washers on here and then this is just a piece of half inch plate uh, that's the actual clamp. So really just slide it into place like that and lock it down. All I'm doing is I'm clamping on this tool surface here. So I'll take it off and show you. So really that bolt is going through this slot and I'm clamping that bar, that piece of half inch plate, right to there. Really kind of a fast, quick way to do it, but really, really effective. All right, so now for the part you guys probably all want to see, this thing actually cutting. Uh, I'm going to cut a little piece of 01 uh, tool steel, 3 16 thick, and um, I'm going to reposition the camera so I get a good shot. No fast forward. Uh, I'll show you just how quickly this thing does cut. Uh, I'm not going to do a whole lot of cutting. Unfortunately, I don't have any knives uh, ready to cut out right now, but um, I'll just show you, give you an idea of how effective this tool is. So that you can see how effective this thing is. Um, really quick cuts, um, really clean cuts, and like I say, it's not hot, not a lot of burrs, way less burrs than using abrasive cutting discs in, a, in an angle grinder, and it's nice that you can handle your material right away after you make these cuts. Really easy uh, to follow your lines. I find things just ride through there nice and true. Also, if you're doing curves, um, you can actually follow some pretty decent curves. The belly of this knife, I actually followed entirely on the bandsaw. So it's kind of nice. You're not coming in here doing multiple cuts for a lot of stuff. You can come through here and just remove all this material. It's kind of a nice little feature. Something a little tighter, obviously, like this. You're going to need to come in and do your several different notches and stuff. But even this handle profile, for the most of it, I was able to follow that curve around um, just with uh, the bandsaw. So there is a little bit of give. Not really tight because they're a half inch thick blade, I believe. And... Um, Really, really, I mean, you just saw how quick that was, how well that works. So, all right, so let's quick look at using a portal bandsaw 
and setting it up in a vertical bandsaw configuration. Very simple to do. Ultimately, you just need a way to hold this saw blade vertically and that's pretty much the extent of it. Take it a little bit beyond that, you can add a plate like this. Very simple to do. Adds a lot of versatility to this and also this plate really helps uh, little tiny pieces of metal like this from getting jammed in between your blade and your wheels. So quite a good little addition. I think that anybody that does any fabrication work in their garage, any metal work, um, could really benefit from this tool, whether you work on cars or you like to make furniture, anything like that. A lot of times, uh, you know, say if you're making a coffee table, a lot of that process is cutting your materials up and getting those ready. Uh, if you can speed that process up, you can shorten the duration of the project quite significantly. Even a small fab shop, like two to ten guys, I think they could really benefit from having a, a saw set up just in the corner somewhere, always like this, because it's so quick, it's just, once you got a switch on here, it's boom, turn it on, cut something, turn it off. Tool that you can kind of leave there, there's no coolant to mess with, there's a lot of those big bandsaws will have coolant and all this stuff, and uh, I don't know, just really, really, really happy with this little setup. I'm really impressed with how well it works. And um, like I said, I wish I'd got one sooner, but I'm pretty stoked to have one now. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this week's Tool Time Tuesday. If you have any questions about this, just leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Also, if you have any uh, recommendations or things for future videos, keep them coming. I've got some from you guys. Those are going to be coming soon. I just had to share this one because I was so excited about buying this tool last week. But... Uh, Going to be coming up with uh, some of your recommendations for some more videos. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Cheers.